Death is always an awkward, gloomy subject to talk about, especially if you're talking about your own impending demise. But let's just say that some people are a little more innovative than the others. Yes, there's people out there who make elaborate plans about their death and its aftermath. In fact, they have a very specific idea of what they want done to their ashes. What's up, Titty Nopers, and welcome to Titty Nope. Make sure to hit that red subscribe button, turn your post notifications on, and like this video if you enjoy. In this video, we're going over stories of five inventors who wanted their ashes turned into their own inventions. Number five, Edward Hedrick. When you think about the time before the internet, there are lots of outdoor sports and activities that come to mind. But one of the classics would be throwing frisbees. Frisbees were first invented by Walter Morrison in 1957. Those simple aerodynamic discs ended up being iconic. They were one of the most popular toys in American history, something that shaped playtime and family bonding for generations. Eventually, in 1975, another inventor named Edward Hedrick stepped in and made a few changes to the design creating the ever-popular Frisbee Golf. Frisbee Golf just took Morrison's original Frisbee idea and introduced them to a whole new generation. The invention was so close to his heart that he would say that Frisbees had some kind of a spirit involved. He believed that when we die, we don't go to purgatory. We just land up on the roof and lay there, kind of saying that souls just float around and land eventually just like frisbees, which is why he wanted his ashes to be turned into frisbees after he died. When he died on August 14th in 2002 at 78 years old, his family did exactly that. Instead of a memorial service, a special batch of frisbees was made with his ashes in them. They were distributed to the entire family, so if they felt like they wanted to play a round of frisbee golf with him one more time, they could do it. Number 4. Renato Bialetti While everyone seems to have a coffee machine these days, for almost 100 years, coffee has been brewed in an aluminum stovetop coffee maker all over the world. Renato Bialetti was the son of the man who invented mocha, and he created the perfect instrument for brewing a steaming cup of espresso. Although their production suffered a bit of a hit during World War II, they ended up recovering just fine, and over the next 60 years, managed to sell over 200 million units throughout the world. These coffee makers were such a staple in Italian homes that they were found in at least 90% of all homes. To say that people lived for coffee would be an understatement, and Bialetti was one of those people. Not only did he live for coffee, but he also died loving it. So much so, that one of his last wishes was for his ashes to be buried inside a mocha pot. While that seemed like a joke at first, when he died on February 11, 2016, at the age of 93, he still stood by that wish. And, well, his family made sure to honor it. He was, in fact, cremated, and his ashes were buried in a mocha pot, in a grave his family can visit with a cup of coffee to honor the legacy he left behind. Number 3. James Booth James Booth was one of the best shotgun experts Britain has ever seen. Throughout his life, he had an interest in guns, which is why it's not surprising at all that he made a career out of it. There were lots of shooting techniques that he executed so well that it was as if he invented them himself. However, he couldn't keep up with his passion for as long as he had hoped. In his late 40s, he got a really bad case of food poisoning, which left him in a coma for 18 months. In 2002, when his condition was not improving, he was taken off of life support and passed away at the age of 50. Even though his death was a tragic loss, his wife Joanna Booth decided that his send-off was going to be as explosive as his life. She remembered how James had told her once that when he dies, he would love to have his ashes turned into shotgun cartridges and shot. And well, that's exactly what Joanna did. James's ashes ended up making 275 cartridges 
that were blessed by a minister and then shot in the air by all of James's close family and friends, spreading the ashes one shot at a time. Number 2. Fred Bauer You've probably seen memes about how potato chips love to sell air with a few chips in there. But we gotta give credit to Pringles for making sure that never happens. Well, thanks to Fred Bauer for inventing the Pringles can in 1966. His idea was to create packaging that would preserve the chips from the point they go in to the point the consumer digs their hand in it. Bauer loved the packaging so much that he frequently talked about being buried in it. At first, his children thought he was joking, but eventually realized that he was very, very serious. Bauer died on May 4, 2008, at the age of 89, after battling with Alzheimer's for the last few years of his life. One thing that never changed, though, was his wish to be buried in a Pringles can. So, after he died, that's exactly what his children did. The can he made to preserve chips now holds his remains for the rest of eternity. Number 1. Mark Grenwald Marvel movies have been a pretty big part of pop culture in the past decade or so. But that wasn't really when Marvel began. Let's not forget the days of their iconic comics. And Mark Grenwald was the man responsible for the layout of these comics. Grenwald worked at Marvel since 1978, but he was the head editor for the Marvel comics from 1985 to 1995. And in that decade, he managed to get the comics to new heights of popularity. He was even the head writer for the Captain America comics and ended up writing more stories than any other writer at the company in history. He ended up being in charge of all the comics that ended up becoming major movies, namely Iron Man, Captain America, Thor, and The Avengers. Sadly, Grenwald's life was cut short when an undiagnosed congenital heart defect took his life on August 12, 1996, when he was just 43 years old. He never really got to see his stories come to life on the big screen, but what he did do was leave behind a last wish. He wanted his ashes to be mixed in with the ink and used to make the same comics he devoted his entire life to. And that's exactly what Marvel did. They had the special ink used in the first printing of the trade paperback compilation of Squadron Supreme, immortalized in the comics forever. That's all for this video. What would you like done to your ashes? Let us know in the comments below. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos just like this. See you in the next one.